Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about the operations of the high priests of Satan within their intimate spiritual captivity. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan Strategic Command, dedicated the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Okay, guys, we have been discussing the seal of Satan in predestination as the corporal appearing of the image of the beast explicates the motions of death's permanent residence appearing within the souls of man. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, guys, um, this is absolutely the seal of Satan as the image of the beast appears in corporal form and the motions of death's resonance within the image of the beast produces works within the environment of the image of the beast okay it's the 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 natural reflection of spiritual occupation of the spirit of antichrist as it resides within the image of the beast the apostle paul delineates the image of the beast's marriage covenant with Satan as those numbers bound by the law in their sins as the worship of death consumes the temple of God and its illicit desires. Romans chapter 7 verse 1 through 5, 1 John 3, 4, Romans chapter 3 verse 20 and 23, Romans chapter 6 verse 23. So we see in Romans chapter 7 verse 1 through 5, we see a magnificent analogy of the image of the beast's marriage covenant with Satan as the those that are numbered with the nar the mark of the beast or the seal of Satan in predestination which is the same thing worship death and it consumes man abiding in the temple of God from within as man labors to satiate his own illicit desires. Let's read what Paul says here in Romans chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. He's speaking to them that are abiding in the glory of God. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. This is not for people that don't believe in the glory and grace of and the the magnificence of our resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, it's not a message for them. Matthew chapter seven verse six makes that absolutely crystal clear. So let's keep going. Romans seven one through five. Know ye not, brethren? For I speak to them that know the law, how the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man. She be called an adulteress, but if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also ye also are become dead to the law by the by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. So this is an, a magnificent analogy of the what appears to me to be um, the marriage covenant between the image of the beast and the harlot appearing in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. And Paul is explicating for us um, as an analogy to a woman that is bound by the law to her husband, the the illicit desires, the illicit works of man as man leaves the habitation of his maker and fornicates with the world it as his illicit desires and becomes uh uh becomes 
an adulteress, if you will, by being, by fornicating with satanic powers within his environment. Okay, and he does so, he does so, we know, by his illicit desire. So this is, this is amazing. This is an amazing passage of scripture where Paul delineates the, the marriage covenant between the image of the beast and Satan. Period. That's that's and it and it actually consumes. It labors to consume the image of the beast in the that abides in the temple of God in its own illicit desire. So let's keep going. The apostle the apostle Paul also explicates for the body of Christ the reign of sin inhabiting the very body of mortal man, as man retains cognizant only of what appears as his individual, illicit, temporal desires. And then finally, in conclusion of judgment, the Spirit of grace declares the domain of Satan as mortal man is held captive to the beast without cognizance of the permanent inhabitation of death's motions or residence within his soul. Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through 14, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45, Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 and 2, and of course, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 5. So, Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through 14, we're seeing Paul is explicating for us the, the reign or the rule of sin as man obeys, or a man uh, under the law, um, seeks after his illicit desires that he perceives in his cognizance as lust and this 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 laboring of man is actually um, man laboring for the marriage covenant between uh, man and and death um, um, as he labors for the dominion of sin within his soul as he follows only what he is cognizant of as his illicit desires. Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through 14. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Okay, so we see here, Paul is explicating in Romans chapter 6, the, the labor of sin to rule within man as man, and, and it doesn't say man is, the only thing man is appearing to labor for as his prize is the, the fulfillment of his own lust. And that's exactly what Paul is explicating in verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. And then verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you for you're not under the law, but under grace. Okay, so as man allows sin to reign and obeying it following his own temporal lust, He's giving place to do, for sin to claim dominion within his soul as satanic occupation that we see fulfilled in the administration of the image of the beast in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. Okay, guys, uh, it is important to note that the seal of Satan appearing and Revelation 13, 15 through 17 is the operational motions of Satan's permanent inhabitation, inhabitation within the image of the beast. Okay. The seal of Satan appearing universally reveals his name as Satan, his title which I would I which seems to me to be the great deceiver and finally his dominion or domain being the inhabitation of earth whose the the excuse me his domain being the inhabitants of the earth whose souls falsely proclaim his authorization to permanent territorial occupation 
And of course, that's within the souls of men. That's his territory is to, and that's his claim to the earth. He does so um, 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 vicariously by claiming the souls of man in their fleshly occupation of the earth. And this appears in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9, 10 through 12. And of course, I wrote Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9 and 12. We have holistically the seal of Satan as it appears universally to um, the inhabitants of of the of the universe that are still unfallen and that are witnessing the seal of satan in predestination as the operational motions of sins attempt to capture territory for satan to to proclaim the earth the earth as satan's domain um and his rightful authorization to reside within the earth without the judgments of Holy Father God, rendering him uh, uh, without any place in the universe, okay? And we, of course, we know that, that Satan will be um, 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 resigned to the lake of fire and, and the final judgment of Holy Father God. So the seal of Satan in Revelation 13, 15 through 17, guys, is its operational emotions as man abides with uh, that reign and dominion and brings that into his environment by his works, okay? But the seal of Satan universally as it appears, and this is, this is the seal of Satan in predestination as it appears with the mark of the beast is still be becoming... Uh, um, what is it still coming to fruition in the fullness of, of its motions as works as we we are witnessing Revelation 13, 15 through 17 come to pass by the administration of the image of the beast. But the seal of Satan that appears universally appearing to Holy Father God and the, the and for instance, the angelic host, and I personally be, believe the hosts of all unfallen worlds that are witnessing the glory of God um, um, proclaim um, judgment upon the wicked populations of the world, the seal of Satan universally reveals um, um, Satan's, first and foremost, it re reveal, reveals Satan's name. It reveals his title, which appears to me to be the great deceiver. And finally, it reveals his attempted dominion or domain as the inhabitants of the earth whose souls falsely proclaim his authorization to permanent territorial occupation upon the earth. Okay, um, and this seal of Satan, as it its its roots appear first, the deepest roots appear first and foremost within the souls of man, to me, appears in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9 and 10 through 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And that's accused is actually past tense. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So we see the seal of Satan in its deepest roots as it is real, revealed not only to the body of Christ, but universally to all of creation. We see the seal of Satan here in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 12, as um, we see Satan's title, his dominion, excuse me, his title, 
excuse me, his name, his title, and his professed dominion, which we understand actually that is proclaimed within Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 12, um, falsely, that it is a false claim to dominion in the earth by the manifest glory and of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our lives as we magnify the glory of God and we, we labor in truth to make manifest um, the seal of God in our lives while we, while we witness the motions of sin bringing forth the habitation of death within the seal of Satan as the image of the beast becomes operational and we witness the operations as the body of Christ. We witness the, the special operations, if you will, of as the motions of sin, as, as physical works of the image of the beast. We witness, we witness this as the body of Christ. The universe is witnessing this also. But this, it had, these people have been sealed. This, the image of the beast as the high priest of Satan has been sealed in predestination. Okay, and the fullness of its operational capacity, the motions of sin, bringing the worship of death in the temple of God, has not been made manifest in my thinking as we have not witnessed yet the fulfillment and holistically of Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. Now, I believe we've witnessed, we are witnessing now the, the image of the beast, um, um, the seal of Satan, and as it appears in the image of the beast in Revelation 13, 15. We are witnessing that condemnation now as the worship of death has captivated these souls and they have successfully, holistically, exchanged their souls to Satan and they're actually laboring now to fulfill Revelation 13, 15 that actually spills over into 16 and 17. And then we have the appearing of Antichrist, of course, in our world in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Let's keep going. So in conclusion, we, we see the seal of Satan simply as his claim and authorization as allowed by Holy Father God to permanently occupy his ter territory upon the earth by way of his children. 1 John 3.10, in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his neighbor. So here, John is absolutely declaring, you know, it's undeniable. There are children of God and there are children of the devil in our world. Okay. I know that it may seem shocking to a lot of people and it can be, it can be. It's when you first accept this truth, it can be shocking. It can be something that, that we don't, that makes us sick, um, spiritually because to understand this truth is to understand that people that are made in the image of God are choosing to worship Satan of their own volition, and they are attempting to captivate and kill the, not only the flesh and the souls of those around the, us of whom that we love and we, we understand to be good people you know, that, that not, are not necessarily are going to go to heaven in the final moments of earth's history, you know, they, there will be captivated, um, and the multifaceted administration of the image of the beast, and they will receive the mark of the beast in the final moments of earth's history. It's very sad. And that's what we're doing today. We're laying down our lives. We're, 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 um, forsaking our own time, attention, and affections, and we're magnifying the glory of God. And we're trying, to, we labor to bring people unto the knowledge of the truth so they can escape captivity as prisoners to Satan by way of his image. Okay, guys? So, and conversely, guys, we see just, I want to interject here real quickly. Conversely, we see the seal of Holy Father God in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through 12, which I've gone over in another lesson, and I'm not going to go over again today. Um, time is not going to allow us to go over this much material within this lesson today. So, Guys, in Revelation 13, 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak 
and cause and conclusion of its administration and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. In Revelation 13, 15, we see the image of the beast appear in corporal form with the seal of Satan in predestination, first orating to the populations of the earth in the spirit of Antichrist, soliciting the worship of death. And in conclusion of its administration, the image of the beast appears in overflow as the worship of death in motion in the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, 1 John 2, 15 through 18. So here we see the image of the beast as the only named protagonist within the seal of Satan. We see Revelation 13, 15 through 17 as it becomes operational in the motions of sin in the natural world as man labors for the marriage covenant with Satan. Um, in conclusion, wait, wait, wait. We see the, we see the image of the beast. As the only named in the seal of Satan, we see the image of the beast as the only named protagonist in corporal in a corporal body as vast numbers of souls appear at appearing as the high priests of Satan that have successfully exchanged the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ for the glory of man. And this is exactly what we're presented with in John chapter 15, verse 1 through 6, when Jesus states, I'm the vine, ye are the branches. He that bideth, bideth in me and I in him, saying, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. I'm the vine. And my father is the husbandman, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him the same bringeth forth fruit, for without me without me ye can do nothing. If a, ba a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And of course, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. And we know in John chapter 15, verse 1 through 6, Jesus is explicating the mark of the beast as the fruits of life and righteousness completely dry up within those that are manifestly declared to be the image of the beast, and they captivate the populations of the world with satanic occupation, wherewith they worship death to fulfill their illicit desires as natural men. So Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts, gifts and sacrifices for sin. So what we're seeing here, guys, the image of the beast, as in Revelation 13, 15, as it fulfills the worship of death, um, the seal of Satan comes to overflow within its soul. It is, um, it is uh, uh, operational with the worship of death. It's constant. It's now today. We know it's orating in the spirit of Christ Christ and it's soliciting the worship of death. And it's attempting to gain power, civil power in Revelation that appears in Revelation 13, 15, to start putting people to death to that will not worship it as a natural man only, cognizant only of its illicit desires. To attempting to fulfill and satiate its illicit desires as a natural man, here we see the image of the beast appear appearing as the high priest of Satan because it has, in fact, exchanged the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ within its own soul for the glory of man. Okay, this is exactly, this is what makes the image of the beast the high priest of Satan because it has, it with no doubt whatsoever, it has allowed the reign and the rule of sin and the administration of its own lust to gain dominion. It fulfills the worship of death. Romans 6, 12 through 14, Revelation 13, 15. It fulfills the worship of death in its operational capacity. And it success by this fact, it has successfully exchanged the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ for the glory of man. And thereafter, it labors in, Rev in verse 16 and 17 to captivate the entire world within its administration as a child of Satan. Okay, and this is what we're seeing. We're seeing um, it doing the exact opposite of the the what we understand to be the administration of the high priest of Jesus Christ. It is it it, it successfully exchanges its soul to Satan. It totally um, um, relinquishes the glory of God. It, it 
exchanges the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ for the glory of man within its own soul, and thereby it sacrifices its own soul as the high priest of Satan to Satan to fulfill its illicit temporal desires as a natural man. And this is what Paul is warning about in Romans 6, 12 through 14, and of course, Romans chapter 7, verse 1 through 5, which appears to me to be in a magnificent analogy, giving us intimate details of what the image of the beast, um, um, as a child of Satan, as it it becomes bound by the law in its sins to be married in covenant with Satan, forsaking the only true husbandman and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is manifestly declared to be um, um, the husbandman, um, the, um, the only husbandman to the body of Christ. And so um, it's, it's just, it's uh, the image of the beast is the only named protagonist appearing as the high priest of Satan that it successfully exchanges the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ for the glory of man in Revelation 13, 15 through 17, which is the motions of sins fulfilling the seal of Satan um, that appeared universally in predestination to the the angelic host of heaven and you know to the all the unfallen worlds. Um, um, the image of the beast is 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 fulfilling this in the presence of God, and of course, and in the presence of the body of Christ, because we follow the word of God. We love Jesus Christ. We follow the word of God, and we we obey um, Holy Father God. We keep His commandments, and we labor um, daily. We labor daily to escape these things, these terrible things that are coming upon the earth as we witness um, the, the final motions of death as they attempt to, to, to captivate all the, the unwary without the knowledge and the glory of God in their lives. So guys, um, it is apparent what we are witnessing that is occurring in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17, you know, okay, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. What's occurring here in Revelation 13, 16, and 17 is appearing as the aftershocks, if you will, of the appearing of the worship of death in the temple of God by way of the administration of the image of the beast. Okay, and this is exactly what the prophet Isaiah explicates for us in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 17. As the image of the beast experiences Luciferian transformation as a child of Satan, claiming dominion and territory, attempting to claim authorization for Satan to reign in, per in permanent occupation upon the earth. Isaiah 51, 14, Romans 3, 13, which of course is the full transformation and transfer the spirit of antichrist from the image of the beast to the creature and matthew chapter 15 verse 13 and and 14 so guys revelation 13 16 and revelation 13 15 we have the full operational administration of the high priest of satan the image of the beast has successfully exchanged the glorious gospel of jesus christ for the glory of man it is um overflowing with the worship of death, and it is it is making this manifest within its environment as it, it utilizes the worship of death to satiate its illicit desires as a natural man. This is all occurring in Revelation 13, 15. What is occurring in Revelation 13, 16, and 17 is the causality of the aftershocks of the administration and the high priesthood of the image of the beast as it labors to kill souls, not only within the body of Christ, um, but the entire populations of the earth. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or the foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So we have... Um, um, the image of the beast appears in corporal form. It causes the worship of death to appear in the temple of God, Revelation 13, 15. And then the image of the beast, because of this fact, the image of the beast in Revelation 13, 16, and 17 causes 
the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh in the world and to, uh, it causes all flesh in the world both within and without the body of Christ to receive the mark of the beast within its environment and within its ju jurisdictions and this is it's the aftershocks if you will revelation 13 16 and 17 is the spiritual aftershocks of the worship of death appearing in the temple of God, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you, which you have of God, and you're not your own, for you're bought with a, with a price. Therefore glorify God in your, in your body and in your spirit, which are God. And this is exactly what's taking place in Revelation 13, 16 and 17 when, all the, when it starts killing all the souls that it can within and without the body of Christ. This is exactly, it's experiencing in fullness Luciferian transformation, it's worshiping death, it's killing people to satiate its own illicit desires as a natural man and only what it's cognizant of as a natural man. And it's this, this administration starts killing multitudes of souls within and without the body of Christ. This is, let's read Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 17. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Luz, first son of the morning? How art thou cut down on the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And I think, guys, that you that we will all find that this is exactly, this is a facsimile. I mean, what Satan, what Lucifer did here as he began to transform into Satan, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Here we see Lucifer transform holistically into Satan. This is exactly what the image of the beast is doing with its own administration as it is captive to Satan within its own heart. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? And that's what this is what Isaiah, in the, in the power of the Holy Spirit, is explicating here. He's explicating the captivity of the entire world to Satan by way of the image of the beast as the image of the beast experiences Luciferian transformation and fulfills the worship of death in the temple of God. That's, this is exactly what Isaiah is explicating for us here in Isaiah chapter 14, 12 through 17. Let's go, okay, guys, let's keep going. The image of the beast having fully experienced Luciferian transformation as a child of Satan, claiming dominion and territory, attempting to claim authorization for Satan to reign in permanent occupation upon the earth. Isaiah 51, 14. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. Romans three thirteen. Of course, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. So guys, it is also apparent to me today, today, that we are witnessing and experiencing the results of the image of the beast attempting to approach unto God on its own terms, as negotiating its own salvation to be near to Holy Father God for eternity in fulfillment of its illicit desires, even as... It labors to captivate all creatures in bondage to service in the glory of man. Okay? Psalm chapter 49, verse 1 through 20. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5 through 8. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 and 5. And of course, Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 17. Let's go ahead and read Psalm chapter 49. Hear this, all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor, together my mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline mine ear to a parable, I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquities of my heels shall compass me about? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. 
for the redemption of their soul is precious and precious and it ceases forever that he should still live forever and not see corruption for he seeth that wise men die likewise the fool and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to other others for he seeth that wise men die likewise the fool and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations they call their lands after their own names nevertheless man being in honor abideth not he is like the beasts that perish this their way is their folly yet their posterity approve their saying selah like sheep they are laid in the grave death shall feed on them and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning and their beauty shall consume and the grave from their dwelling but god will redeem my soul from the power of the grave for he shall receive me selah be not a, not thou afraid when one is made rich when the glory of his house of his house is increased for when he dieth he shall carry nothing away his glory shall not descend after him though while he lived he blessed his soul and men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself he shall go to the generations of his fathers they shall never see light man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish okay so guys It is apparent to me that what we're seeing, we're seeing the image of the beast attempting to serve two masters. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. It's attempting to satiate its own illicit desires, and it's attempting in its own folly and foolishness to negotiate its it, the terms of its own salvation and actually holding in ransom its own soul as while... It attempts to captivate everybody with the power, the satanic power, wherewith it is captivated in and of itself. It's attempting to negotiate not only its own souls, but the souls of others, but the souls of all those that it can captivate within its illicit desires. And this is a, this is, appears to me exactly what the psalmist is explicating here in Psalm chapter 49, verse um, 1 through 20. And the prophet Isaiah is addressing in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5 through 8. This appears, the, the image of the beast, it's not today, it's not, it's in magnifying its own glory and concentrating on the glory of man above the glory of God. It's attempting in its ignorance and foolishness and folly to negotiate the terms of its own salvation with Holy Father God on its own terms. It's not coming to God um, um, from a position of righteousness. It's coming, um, it's, it's in its own um, deceit, in its own abode of deceit, without cognizance of Satan's presence within its environments. It's attempting to, to negotiate and to ransom its soul to God as with the souls of all those that it can captivate on pain of death to its illicit desires. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1 through 20. Excuse me, Psalm chapter 49, verse 1 through 20. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person, per person perish, and leave their wealth to, other to others. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him, for the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceases forever. Nevertheless, man being in honor and abideth not, he is like the beasts that perish. So Isaiah, let's read Isaiah 42, 5 through 8. This is exactly appears what the psalmist, um, possibly King David, is 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 for or ordaining um, um, as as the motions of of death the worship of death appears within the image of the beast isaiah chapter 42 verse 5 through 8 and this appears exactly what isaiah is addressing here also thus saith god the lord he that created the heavens and stretched them out he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh 
out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walketh therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Okay, this is exactly God is declaring. He's creator, sovereign source and sustainer of all creation. Man has not place within this capacity, and he's not met, God is not willing to share his glory with man on his own terms. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 and 5. And we see, we understand this to be the great deception that, and to be um, um, a, a, a watermark of the of the presence of the great deceiver that that appears in the seal of Satan in Revelation chapter twelve verse seven through nine and ten excuse me Revelation chapter seven excuse me twelve verse seven through twelve Malachi three six and five for I am the Lord I change not therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed and I will come near to you to judgment and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages the widow and the fatherless that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me saith the Lord of hosts for I am the Lord I change not therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And then I wrote Exodus 21 through 17. And guys, Exodus 21 through 17, in my thinking, is the operational capacity of the fullness of God's glory as man labors for the seal of eternity, being no longer cognizant of sin and death within his environment. John chapter 14, verse 21 through 24. He that hath my commandments and he and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall loved, be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, Unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine but the fathers which hath sent me. Here we see those, here we see, we see um, the image of the beast that has not the glory of God. It's keeping not, it understands not, it's keeping not, it's, it's magnifying its own glory. It's not coming to God within the bounds of holiness. It's coming to God on its own terms. And it's it's definitely not keeping the sayings of God. It, it's keeping only the, the motions of sin and the worship of death and its illicit desires. And it has, it has, it's, it's not um, um, positioning itself toward Holy Father God in righteousness. There's no, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, the the image of the beast is absolutely, absolutely um, attempting to negotiate its salvation as a natural man towards Holy Father God. And that's what appears to me is happening today. Okay, this appears to be the intimate details of, of the high priest of Satan, the image of the beast, as it abides within its own deceit and attempts, and it att attempts to serve two masters and it's telling itself that it's spiritually, it's still abiding in safety and security. And it's not, it's not fearful for its soul and judgment coming upon its soul in the final, you know, in the final moments of our earth's history. So, which of course, Jude chapter 11, verse 13, um, gives us a horrible view of uh, uh, what's going to happen to the souls of these people that um, um, are manifestly declaring themselves um, to the world and to the body, to the to the universe and to the, the, the corporal body of Christ today as absolutely children of Satan. So, uh, guys, I see, here's very important, I see Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 17, the Ten Commandments, as the only standard 
by which mortal man can approach unto God. Okay? Let me say that again. I see Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 17, the Ten Commandments holistically, including the Sabbath commandment, as the only standard by which mortal man can approach unto God. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. But as he which hath called you is holy, so you be ye holy in all manner of conversation and speech. For it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Romans chapter 7, verse 12 through 14. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy, just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. So we see the law is is um is the law is holy and the law um gives us it defines um um god's holiness it gives us as mortal men understanding of the boundaries of the character of of holy father god okay so it's the only standard by um which mortal man can approach unto god okay without um the seal of eternity abiding within man, man cannot, man will never obtain co full cognizance of God um, within, his, within his being. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and 6. And by the appearing of, by the presence, only by the presence of God are men cognizance of sin in their life. Romans chapter 7, verse 12 and 13 makes that absolutely crystal clear. Wherefore the law is holy, the commandment holy, just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. Only by the presence of God are we cognizance of the depth of the darkness within our own souls and the darkness that surrounds us within our environment that is made manifest in the motions of sins within by the sins of others and the presence of course of 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 the demons of hell and satan himself and the presence of death in our in our world today so and of course matthew chapter 5 verse 17 through 19 so guys let's keep going um, we absolutely understand the image of the beast to be the high priest of Satan, having successfully exchanged the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ for the glory of man, Revelation 13, 15, as it serves death to the populations of the earth in fulfillment of its illicit desires. However, what is apparent now and even more shocking is what Holy Father God has revealed in sacred scripture, what is occurring in truth now today within the spiritual environment of those we know to be the corporal appearing of the image of the beast. And this occurs in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. For such a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is, tr is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose ends shall be according to their works. Okay, and guys, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, where we see Satan appearing as an angel of light. This appears to me to be a prophecy of the appearing of Antichrist in our world. It's a prophecy of the appearing, not only of the appearing of Antichrist in our world, it's also a prophecy, it's also reveals to us the administration of the image of the, of the beast as the high priest of Satan, as it labors in its own glory as a natural man, deceived in its own lust, worshiping death to fulfill its own lust, killing people summarily without any pretense of righteous judgment or justice to satiate its own illicit desires, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9 and 10, as it beholds its own glory, it's actually, in actuality, um, um, we know it's, it's attempting to negotiate on its own terms its salvation and ransom its own soul to God and the souls of those that it's attempting to captivate on pain of death to its illicit desires with the mark of the beast within and without the body of Christ. 
That's what appears to me is taking place today with the, the complex administration of the image of the beast. And God absolutely declares this foolishness in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for he will, either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and the things of man. And we know, as the image of the beast serves and worships death more and more, without the presence of God, it's not cognizant. It get, becomes less and less cognizant to the demons of hell agglomerating within it, within its environment, Revelation 18, 1 and 2. And... Satan, actually, and the presence of death as it is seated within the heart and the soul um, of the image of the beast. It's not, it has no cognizance whatsoever of, of the overflow of the spirit of Antichrist that is contaminating its blood, okay? And so 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15 gives us a, a prophecy. It gives us a prophecy for such a false apostles, the seed of workers transforming themselves and the apostles of Christ. And here we see, we see the image of the beast fooling itself, ab abiding in its own glory and attempting to magnify its own glory and proclaim its glory as the glory of God in the glory of man as it's worshiping death to satiate its own illicit desires. And for such a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. This appears to me to be a prophecy of the appearing of Antichrist, as all those with the mark of the beast are deceived into thinking that the this man that they're that who's they're all captive to on pain of death to this man to the will of one man which is the appearing of Antichrist in our world, okay? Which is the lower form of, of, of Satan's presence in the spirit. It's, it's, it, the Antichrist, in my thinking, is Satan. It's Satan, but it's Satan with limitations. It's Satan's limit with the same limitations that appear within mortal man. Okay, in the flesh, not necessarily spiritually, but in a fleshly body. And it, of course, he will have other limitations on him. You know, that we don't know. That we probably, we, we probably, we may not know that until we, we have the seal of God in fullness. We understand that we have the seal of God. But first and foremost, we retain cognizance that Jesus Christ is, is, is second advent is imminent, whereas those who fall away in Babylon, Matthew chapter 24, verse 43, 42 through 51, and are concentrated horizontally on temporal things and infected with the spirit of Antichrist, are only cognizant of what is temporal, and they lose cognizance of the imminent second advent of Jesus Christ. They become drunken. They begin to beat their fellow servants, and they become captivated with the mark of the beast before the second advent of Jesus Christ. This is absolutely what's declared upon the servants of God that are that are in fellowship, communion, and fellowship and communion with the image of the beast in the final moments of Earth's history. This is exactly what is is being depicted um, um, by Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew, in Matthew chapter um, 24, verse 42 through 51. So. The, the, we see the deceit. We see Satan as the great deceiver as man, as man, you know, man is still witnessing death. He, we, he will witness death more and more. It'll accelerate more and more because God knows that, that death, by the appearance of death, men will turn and seek after righteousness to save their souls alive when they know their flesh, the destruction of their flesh is imminent, okay? God knows that men will do this, and they've been doing this, uh, you know, um, since the time of Christ, at least. They've been doing this for, for, for centuries, okay? They, you know, men will turn to Christ when they understand that the destruction of their flesh is imminent, and they'll do so to save their souls alive. But the image of the beast and its administration, it is... It is, it is 
serving death and as it becomes it's serving death to the populations of the world it has the seal of satan in predestination it still witnesses death within its environment but in the foolishness of its of its beholding its own glory um it is actually in actuality it is it is uh it is finding it is approach it is it is believing that it's approaching unto God, you know, in its own illicit desires, when in fact I believe the scriptures are teaching us just the exact opposite. I believe that the scriptures are teaching us that what the image of the beast believes as it is attempting to approach unto God and ransom its own soul is not God at all. Okay, I believe that that as it, it it's worshiping death, it's serving death to the population, and it's focusing on temporal things, attempting to satiate its illicit desires. Um, what the image of the beast, the scriptures are telling us, what the image of the beast is actually doing, is it's going directly to Satan. Okay, it is not. God has rejected it. It's not approaching unto God in any form or fashion or facsimile. Or position of righteousness it's not looking in any way form or fashion towards Holy Father God it's telling itself within its own soul that it is that it is the glory of the world in and of itself and it has the right to impose satanic subjugation upon all flesh that it can captivate and it's insanity and it's lunacy but what is actually taking place is it's going directly to Satan. God has rejected it holistically, and it's going directly to Satan. And it's it's perceiving in its own soul that it's on some righteous crusade, and it's going to to uh, um, it's on some righteous crusade that's going to make life better for people when it comes to power, and it can force its will upon the flesh of the populations of the world. And the, I believe the scriptures are making it absolutely crystal clear. This is 100% a lie. And God is no place. God is nowhere in proximity to the prayer of these satanic monsters that appear as the image of the beast in Revelation 13, 15. And that are attempting, that are orating today in the spirit of Antichrist and soliciting the worship of death in our world that we are all painful aware of in the experience in our experience as natural men. So in further analysis of the corporal appearing of the image of the beast in Revelation 13, 15, we see the image attempting to kill the, to kill the flesh of all souls whom refuse to relinquish the spirit of grace as the glory of God, attempting to establish its own glory, even as the image kills the souls of those whom serve its illicit desires, its illicit temporal desires, as a natural man, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, and Romans chapter 8, verse 10. I believe this is exactly, this is exactly um, what we're seeing Paul explicate in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. Two Timothy chapter three verse one through seven. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinence, fierce, incontinence, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away for of this sort are they which creep into houses and leave cap lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with divers lusts ever learning learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth so guys uh, what ap what appears to me that that um Paul is explicating here is the the appearing of the image of the beast um, um, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, denying the gospel of Jesus Christ by obeying the commandments of Jesus Christ in love, John fourteen twenty one, and 
as it administrates and it goes for of this sort of they which creep into houses and leave captive, leave captive silly women laid with sins, it goes in an ecclesiastical capacity to the bodies of Christ and it leads captive those that it, it can infect with the spirit of Antichrist. Um, um, this is exactly what Paul is explicating here in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7, 7, the administration of the image of the beast that is attempting to captivate those within the body of Christ. We know um, the, the mother of harlots upon her forehead was name written, mother, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. We know that there are many women that are depicted. There are many, there are many facets of Protestantism. There's Methodists, Lutherans, um, Pentecostals, which are magnificent, and Christian scientists, which are magnificent. That I get every time I listen to them, I'm anointed. I, I absolutely am anointed by by their teachings. There's many facets in the body of Christ, and there's but there's many people who who also. Um, and we all lie against the glory of God, and we all tell lies against the glory of God, and we all lie against the glory of God in our works. Okay, we all, no man is Alpha and Omega in the beginning end. No man knows the end, the end from the beginning. I mean, yeah, the, the, the end from the beginning. Only Jesus Christ is, knows that, okay? So what appears to me Paul is explicating here is the, admi the administration of the image of the beast as it goes in to the bodies of Christ. It attempts to anoint the bodies of Christ with the spirit of Antichrist, and it understands the captivity in truth of the man of God as the man of God lies against the glory of God, attempting to magnify his glory above the glory of God. And I personally believe that the image of the beast is understands Christian doctrine better than a large portion of the body of Christ. I personally believe that the image of the beast um, um, understands um, the multifaceted um, 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 doctrinal um, uh, 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 doctrinal uh, preferences that are repeated throughout the body of Christ in mainstream Protestantism. Protestantism. I personally don't believe in Sunday keeping. I believe the the the, the Sabbath was um, a memorial of creation. It pointed back towards creation. It was it was given to Adam and Eve. Um, um, uh, the Sabbath. Excuse me. I believe the Sabbath was given to God. Uh, in the Garden of Eden, it was given. To, uh, excuse me, it was given to man in the Garden of Eden by God, and therefore it is a memorial of creation, and it could no way have been affected um, by sin, and and could have been altered by the death of Jesus Christ on the. I, I mean, it can't have be affected by sin by men not receiving it, but it is. It's. It wasn't the 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 Sabbath memorial of creation was not it was not given to man to deal with sin okay it was not it was not part of the administration of the law through Moses it was given to man in the garden of eden and therefore it could no way have been affected um in its in in, in its uh um uh, in truth by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross so um it appears to me um, the last line of Rep. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7, we see, we see it says, for of this sort, or excuse me, for of this sort are they which creep, which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I personally believe that the image of the beast believes in the Sabbath commandment. It understands that Exodus 21 through 17 is the seal of Holy Father God. And it appears to me that the image of the beast in its own folly is attempting as a stronghold, holding its own soul in ransom to fulfill its illicit desires is attempting to captivate the body of Christ in a lie so it can it can actually maintain its own its own soul as some sort of stronghold for what it believes to be the truth uh, uh, and glory of God and the glory of man. Okay, that's probably the the best way that 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 I can describe um, that. And what is appears to be um, what Paul is explicating in two Timothy three one through seven. This is the administration and the final verses of this in verse um, five through seven. We see it appears to me we're seeing the administration um, of the image of the beast um, appearing in the bodies of Christ 
um, as as the image of the beast infects the body of uh, the body of Christ with the spirit of Antichrist, as it labor as it is it is negotiating with God in its own soul, ransoming its own soul and the souls of others to God, um, and attempting to captivate the entire world and what it knows is a great big lie. Okay, let's read 1 Timothy 3, 5 through 7 again. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. And I believe that that's a reference to the false doctrines that appear in the body of Christ. And we know that 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 man magnifying the glory of God, the glory of man above the glory of God, is man following his own lusts and ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that is a very important line. That appears to me to be the fact that that if the captivity to the image of the beast will leave the body of Christ and the perpetual abode of a lie. The captivity to the to the administration of the image of the beast as the seal of Satan appears in the natural world and its operational capacity in Revelation 13, 15 through 17 will leave as this is fulfilled in whatever measure is it is in the nations and in the jurisdictions of the image of the beast, this will leave everybody in captivity to the image of the beast in the perpetual abode of a lie, which is the mark of the beast. It's people retaining their lives as natural men while their souls are dead. That's what the mark of the beast is. It's it's men, it's it's people abiding in corporal bodies why their souls are spiritually dead. That's and they're 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 reserved unto judgment in moments um, at the second advent of Jesus Christ. So this appears to me to be an amazing uh, 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 two Timothy three one through seven appears to me to be uh, Paul appears to me to be ex explicating this very fact that the image of the beast as it is negotiating on its own terms and ransoming its own terms toward Holy Father God and approaching unto Holy Father God um, um, without any, <laughs> without the bounds of holiness, it is, uh, and what it understands to be true, which what I believe is, it, what it understands to be true is, is true. It, it has a measure of truth. It understands, I personally believe, the, under, the image of the beast absolutely believes that Exodus 21 through 17 without any alteration is the seal of God. It absolutely believes that. But it's, it's magnifying its own glory above the glory of God and it's, it's forsaking the glory of God to satiate its own illicit desires as a natural man, and it's attempting to captivate the entire world in a lie with the mark of the beast. To satiate its own illicit desires, and this appears to me to be the 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 the, the intimate spiritual operations of what we are witnessing today in the corporal appearing of the image of the beast as it is now today, orating the spirit of Randy Christ and soliciting the worship of death. So finally, as we are presented with the predestination of Judas Iscariot, as his administration of his own glory brought condemnation at, at through works within his, 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 within his environment, we are given intimate details of satanic occupation upon those who are numbered as children of the beast. So we know that when, when Judas is resurrected in, at, at, at the second advent of Jesus Christ, the full manifestation of the, 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 the mark of the beast will be manifest, as with all children of Satan, will be manifest within his soul. He'll see the Lord Jesus Christ descend from the air, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. He'll have the mark of the beast, and then he'll be destroyed with the spirit of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. Um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 through 12 and he'll be reserved for a thousand years um, his soul will be reserved in the grave for a thousand years until he is resurrected to be resigned to the lake of fire Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 15 so that appears Psalm chapter 1 109 verse 1 through 22 we're given intimate details of 
Judas Iscariot's captivity to the mark of the beast. And as it becomes operational um, uh, within, at, within, as it became operational within his environment, his his works actually spiritually his works have ramifications on those around him and what else was in there and it's giving us more details it gives psalm 109 is giving us more details about uh, uh god cutting off those with the mark of the beast, spoiling those with the mark of the beast, and the desolation of the absence of God of those that appear with the mark of the beast. Psalm chapter 109. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let, his, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you are abiding in mercy and grace, as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.